Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now Streamlight products are products that I have definitely come to appreciate and trust. Everything from their hiking and camping and backpacking setups all the way through their work lights and in this case their weapon lights. Here on my SIG P365XL this is the TLR7 sub which at this point I have been running for a while. No problems everything with this still working great and even after a few hundred rounds. Granted I do need to still continue to use this on a long-term basis to truly judge the quality but so far it's been absolutely flawless and so turning the corner a little bit into a larger option this here is the TLR RM2 laser the TLR RM lineup whether it's been the RM1 or the RM2 have been around for a while but here in 2022 adding the laser for me, this is definitely going to come into play in a couple of different places. Now, what we're going to do today, a first look at this, some general impressions, and then moving forward, I will actually start using this in a little bit and how practical of field use can you really get into, but attempting to get into some practical field use so that I can speak to it a little bit more. But again, today, just a first look at this, trying to get this sort of out of the package onto my firearms and figuring out how it's going to work for me. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Streamlight who did provide this for review. Now, again, the TLR RM2 laser. As I said in the intro, the TLR RM series has been around for a while, but now adding the laser, well, this is going to be pretty good for me for a few reasons. And the reason why I say that, I do have my rifle, and this is kind of intended for a rifle, but what I'm going to intend on is using it for my home defense shotgun this here this is my mossberg 590 thunder ranch edition i've been using this for a little while now number of months kind of building it out getting it to where it's really optimized for my needs now as we look at the front of this you can see i do have a weapon light right now currently this is the olight balder pro a great light i've had no real issues with it but there are a couple of things that left it just a little bit lacking. First and foremost, the need to get on the pump and where my hand falls. And then every now and then I accidentally just bump it. So like I'll find that sometimes even without intending as I take a shot. And if I have this, say, for example, on the light mode, I'm like bumping it and the lights turning on and off. Or if I wanted the light on and I take a shot and I go to pump it, my hand hits it and it accidentally turns it off. So it hasn't been perfect. It's been fine operationally. It just has a little bit of a deficiency in terms of the geometry. So now shedding this off while well, I can make room for another weapon light. And as we're seeing here, that's where this TLR RM2 laser comes into play. The other thing I did attempt to use to try to kind of clean it up a little bit was here, this Olight GLM. The GLM is a nice weapon light, but again, it stuck out kind of funny. It actually hung off the side of the shotgun a little too much. It was a little too big. It kind of got in the way and I really wanted it mounted on the underside, it just wasn't working. It stuck out funny. Again, another reason why I think this TLR RM2 laser is going to come into play. And so now as we get into this, pretty typical in terms of the packaging, very straightforward. Now you will notice that this actually does come with some CR123s. This again, keep in mind is the RM2. The RM1 is going to be a smaller version of this. The RM2 being a two CR123 option. And so as we pull this out of the package, some of the considerations was, well, do I really want to go with the two CR123 battery option. It's gonna be a larger light. Granted, it's gonna have a little more performance, little more output, little more runtime, but what about the size? It gets a little bit bigger. However, the first thing I'm gonna say is it really gets bigger out the front. It is exactly the same from the time you get 
really through your uh, pick rail adapter here through the back of the light. So this entire section, whether you go with the RM1 or the RM2, is the same size. So at that point, it made a little more sense for me to really go with the RM2. It does stick out further out the front. That really doesn't impact me. In fact, when you look at most weapons, I would say for the most part, you have a little less conflict out the front than you do really where your hand grips or your different positions are going to be. And that's certainly the case for me on the shotgun where it's a pump. Now again, the TLR RM2 Laser R, so the laser in red, this is the newest edition. So you'll notice that the laser here on the bottom, when you look at other videos or other sort of photos of people that have the RM, it does not have this sort of lower section here, which here you can see is that laser. I do tend to like green lasers. I don't care either way, to be honest with you, but I do tend to like green lasers. This one happens to be in red. And as you look at the front here, you can see it does have your windage and elevation adjustments. That's going to be important. Important. We're going to play with that a little bit because I do want to get this kind of configured and I would say more for the indoor and like home self-defense scenario. So getting this dialed in is going to work out pretty well. Going through the rest of the packaging here, there is usually a number of adapters, which you can see here. It definitely comes fully loaded with adapters. So 19, 13 adapters, a couple of different spacers, and then here universal. So very cool. This thing is fully outfitted. And as we look a little bit closer here, it does come with what they're calling the 1913, really version four. As we look a little closer here, 19, 13, 1, 2, and 3 do come with this. And what it looks to do is sort of change the positioning just a little bit. So we're going to need to pay close attention to that to see what works out best for my application. The two batteries here, very simple. Now again, this is a dual CR123 platform. Uh, it makes me wonder a little bit why they didn't just go to 18650 for the version 2 and then stay with the CR123 for the version 1. There's probably manufacturing considerations that had to come into play. You end up with the little routing covers. You end up with the hex key here, which is awesome because this is going to be leveraged to adjust the elevation and windage of the laser. So that's going to be nice. And then here, the pressure switch. So coming again with what you need, a couple of screws to lock things down, and then the pressure switch itself. Generally, these tend to come with some uh, zip ties. So here you do have zip ties. Two short too medium and too long. So depending on your needs, that will work out. And then the actual pressure switch itself, which has sort of a double-sided you know, adhesive here, which I try not to use stuff like this whenever possible. I really like to avoid it. I mess with my stuff a lot. As a reviewer, I am literally constantly changing things out for demonstrations and literally for reasons like today. So not having things that are more like stuck on kind of works a little better for me, but this would probably come into play if you're somebody looking for a real sturdy permanent mounting system. But here again, the actual pressure switch you'll see here, it does connect into the backside of the light itself. Now these rail adapters do have some routing for the cables. That's very nice. We're going to have to play with this just a little bit to see what works best, but you do end up with two, one for the front and one for the back. So in theory, you'll see these are very simple. They go on here pretty easily, actually just sits in a little bit of a tray there, and then these mount on the weapon. You'll also notice that there are some screw holes, so kind of got to play with this a little bit. I feel like you thread this in and then it kind of threads down and into place, but I'm just gonna have to pay attention to that and see how it works out. As we take a look at the back of the light here, you'll notice this does have a cover. So that can be removed if you wanna use the pressure switch. You do not necessarily have to. You end up with your switches on the underside here. So if you wanna just leverage that, you can bump that on and off. I might do that, I might not. It depends how things work out. Now in terms of the light here, 
We're going to have to see. They usually will lock this down. So we'll get into the battery installation here. Just unthreading the front. Underneath it is gasketed. Because this came without the batteries in it, there's no paper or anything to worry about on the inside. But installing the batteries here should be pretty straightforward. Button side down. Threading on the lens. This is almost identical to what I have on the TLR7 Sub. As you take a look here, very similar in terms of the actual form factor, very similar on the front, the way everything works. So Streamlight at this point, sort of making a more, I would say like uniform platform, which is nice, a little more familiarity for dexterity and the ability to gain a little bit of muscle memory. But the front of this does lock out. So if you're not careful, this can be locked out. So when it's on the sort of open, that at that point makes no contact with the batteries. That is completely locked out. But then turning this to that solid, that is now making contact with the batteries and the light does work. Now the top mode here is indicating both the light on and the laser. So if you bump this, You'll notice it's momentary. If you push it real quick, it locks on. And as you look here, it's gonna be hard for you to see, which you probably can't at all, but right here, you do have the red laser. So both the light and the laser, as I shine this off into the distance, I can make that out. The camera's really gonna struggle, but you could probably see it as I shine it on the gray there. So you can see both the light pattern and also the laser. Flipping the switch now to the middle, that is light only. So again, light only, very simple. And on the bottom, laser only. So that there, again, laser only. Now that's very similar to other weapon light systems that you may see. Again, that was very much the case with the Baldur Pro. Same type of thing, it had those three modes, but the Streamlight TLR RM2 laser, again, R for the red laser, this is just going to be sweet. Now, in terms of mounting this, I do need to think just a little bit about how this is going to work out and what my objectives are. The first thing for me is really going to be making sure I get this mounted as far forward as possible. And that, again, was part of the considerations as I looked at this, the ability to mount this pretty far forward. And then again, the difference in the RM2 versus the RM1 sticking out the front, which really does not impact my ability to get my hands on the forend. And so as I loosen this up, you could certainly use a slotted screwdriver. I try to avoid that. I don't like the metal on metal contact. Even though I'm using a penny, it is gonna be just a little bit less aggressive. So getting the penny in here, you could use pretty much any coin to get this started very straightforward and then just transition to this little thumb screw now again you can look and see this is the 13-4 adapter which has a little bit of a different spacing from the other ones in my opinion the further back everything sits the better because that pushes the light forward again i'm trying to buy my hands space so i want the one that's going to sit this light the furthest out the front which as i look at these i believe this one already is i mean by the looks of it it should be the one that really buys me uh sort of the best layout here so i think that's going to work just fine as we go to mount this you can press against the spring so there is a little spring in there and again, mounting this about as far forward as I possibly can. That should work out mighty nice. Everything indexing onto the rail, just about perfect. Seeing everything sit perfectly flush, that's really nice. The interesting thing you'll notice too, the cover in the back does sort of index into the rail. That's a very interesting little detail. I like how they did that. So now as you get a look at this on the front of the forend here, very nice, just a good aggressive look. I like this, it looks the part, and I love that it's sticking out the front. I really did not want this too far back, and in fact, as you get a look at my hand position, that's gonna work out just fine. It actually completely avoids the light, which is awesome. That's kind of a big deal, because the last thing you wanna find is that you're wrecking into something, especially with the recoil on the shotgun, and the ability to pump right away and get back, like, and acquire your 
sight picture, you don't want to be racking into your hands and this definitely can have some kick. So that's going to work out really well. I love that. The ability now on the underside to get on that button pretty straightforward so should not be too difficult i can just roll my hand underneath get on the button the side switch is really for me it's up here by my finger so here i'm gonna have to sort of learn to rock my finger forward i don't know part of me would almost like it to be on my thumb but that's just fine i'll probably leave this sort of in that top setting anyway which is a combination between the light and the laser so now as we get into the home defense scenario, you can see good amount of light, more than enough, thousand lumens. You gotta remember, everything you're shining at, somebody else is shining back at you. The biggest advantage with this light to me, it's the laser. Having that laser on there is just awesome. Helping to sight in real easy and really get on your target quickly. The combination between the light and the laser is about as good as you could ask for, in my opinion. But as we take a look at the actual beam pattern, you'll see that defined hot spot right in the middle. This does have a good amount of flood. So as I pan off in the opposite directions, you'll notice still a good amount of flood coming off to the side. Now, pretty much in the middle of that hot spot is the laser. It's gonna be a little bit hard for you to see and I do still need to dial that in. So if I'm gonna be accurate with my shots, I want it to be as close as possible. So at this point, let's get that laser dialed in. We'll see what it takes. Now, in order for me to do this effectively, I do need a bore laser. So as you can see here, this is the TAG bore laser. I covered this in a prior video. This is a very helpful and useful tool. Getting this installed here, this is gonna allow me to sight this in with reasonable accuracy, all things considered. So as you can see, that appeared to be off by quite a bit at this point, getting it dialed in. I need to bring my shot down. That's the way I think this is going to run. So as we look at the side here, this does have the adjustments. So as I look at it here, down and up, I believe what I need to do, keep in mind, the laser on the TLR RM2 was on the center of the target. My shot came in high. So I believe if this is sort of similar to a scope, I need to go down, which means bring my shot down. So we're gonna test that out and see how this goes. Getting on it here, I don't know. I'm just gonna do one full revolution and see what happens. So that was literally completely off the chart high. So I obviously went the wrong direction. So I'm gonna take a slightly different approach here, see if I can make a difference. We're gonna get this back on the target. You'll see what I'm up to. And so as you can see, working on this to get this adjusted properly, I am at 24 feet. So getting this sighted in, getting the laser on target, taking a shot, finding my adjustments, and moving the laser accordingly, both in the elevation and in windage. And so at this point, you can see I have managed to get this reasonably zeroed in. It's pretty good for my needs. It's as close as I'm going to personally need it to be. And again, that's at about 24 feet, which... I wouldn't think I need to go pretty much any different than that, and especially for the indoor scenario. So now let's take a look at the pressure switch. Let's see if we can get that mounted on here. Now, just feeling things out, this is going to be something where maybe, I don't know, I got to kind of think, do I want to get up on it? I probably want to get it on this side so I can rock my hand forward and get on that switch. It should work out a little better, whereas sometimes for me when I'm grabbing the pump, I'm going to be leveraging that grip strength with my thumb to kind of grab on there. So keeping it off of this side and maybe more on this side will be a benefit. All right, so now at this point with the pressure switch mounted, this went pretty well overall. It was a little bit finicky, not too big of a deal. What I found I had to do was get the two end plates into place appropriately spaced so then I could fit the switch in. After I got these mounted onto the rail, I took the switch, I kind of pressed it down and into place and it seems to have gone just fine. Now I had already routed my cable in an appropriate location, so I kind of had the switch itself floating off, got these into place with the cable sort of routed through, popped this into place and then was able to spin the cable around. One thing you will have to do is actually remove the cover from the back side of this, so that little dust cover. So you do have to take this light off and then put it back on, and then you can pop the connector into place. So at this point, this did go overall very well. I can reach forward. I can get on this here. 
I can get underneath to the different modes, so that's not a problem. So selecting the modes, this seems to work very well. So leaning on the button, that is the temporary momentary press, and then pressing it, it will stay on. I do at this point have the ability to get on this, and you'll notice the light does appear to flicker, but I can't tell if it's the light actually flickering or if it's just a shadow. Take a quick watch. So just real quick, as I get on this here, you can see. I feel like it's just temporarily losing a little bit of contact. So as I run the forend, the batteries must shift just a little bit. So it does have a tendency to blink just a little bit. But all in all, I'm definitely excited for this TLR RM2 laser. Very cool. I love it on the front here. Looking the part really badass. This thing is just awesome. At this point, it fits really well. I like the way that it sticks out the front. It doesn't get back onto my grip too far. I think this is going to be just about perfect. So for a tactical shotgun, I'm hoping this is going to be a quality application. I know it's originally intended for a long gun, but here, this is pretty sweet. So if you have a tactical shotgun, weigh in in the comments below. Do you think this would work for you? Do you think this is something that's going to be a good quality option for me? I definitely do. Now moving forward, I am definitely going to need to test this. Like I mentioned, how much practical testing can you do with this? Only time will tell. I'm going to have to really play with this as much as possible, get it out to the range, see if this holds up after repetition, and just generally speaking, my overall impressions. But so far, very good. And again, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Streamlight who did provide this for review. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is more of my primary gear. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, lots of outdoor activities, and all the gear that goes with it. So if you like what you see here on Outer Limitless 2, do me a favor and check me out on my primary Outer Limitless channel. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.